perched atop Earth's loftiest peak above sea level, survival seems improbable. Mount Everest's imposing summits, relentless cold, ferocious winds, and perpetual snow create an unforgiving habitat. Yet amid this harsh environment thrives a creature of legend, the Yeti. This colossal, shaggy being has been sighted traversing the Asian mountain ranges from China to the Himalayas. Descriptions of the Yeti vary widely, with some likening it to an ape, others to a bear, and still others proposing it as an unidentified humanoid species. Historical accounts of a wild man in the Himalayas first surfaced in the 19th century, though they garnered scant attention. However, the 20th century witnessed a surge of interest spurred by expeditions, reported sightings, and a renowned photograph, igniting a fervent quest to uncover the truth behind the elusive creature. The term Yeti is commonly believed to stem from the Tibetan Sherpa dialect, possibly derived from Yada, meaning cliff dwelling bear or animal of rocky places. Yet, the popular depiction of the Yeti as the abominable snowman lacks substantial folklore predating the 20th century. Nevertheless, written accounts of the Tibetan legend of the Yeti trace back to the 12th century. Described as an ape-like being over six feet tall, covered in reddish-brown fur, and capable of bipedal locomotion, the Yeti's existence has sparked diverse explanations. Tibetan tradition recognizes various forms of the Yeti, from those walking on two legs to larger variants preying on livestock while moving on all fours. Despite their intimidating appearance, Yetis are believed to primarily subsist on mosses, frogs, and pikas, with occasional thefts from human supplies. Yeti encounters are often depicted as nocturnal, accompanied by high-pitched vocalizations, with sightings remaining rare in Tibetan tradition. The two-legged Meda features prominently in Buddhist iconography, appearing in temple decorations and religious scrolls. This enigmatic creature embodies a blend of folklore, mythology, and cultural beliefs, adding layers of complexity to the enduring mystery of the Yeti. In a religious and historical Tibetan text dating back to the 12th century, it is suggested that both wild people and humans share common ancestors, yet the Meta occupies a unique position. Neither fully human or fully animal, this concept is reflected in the artwork adorning Tibetan temples, which often portrays the Yeti realm, depicting a spiritual connection between humans and animals. Tibetan Buddhist narratives depict Yetis as multifaceted beings, capable of both kindness and malevolence. One popular Himalayan tale recounts an injured yogi aiding a wild man afflicted with a splinter in his foot. The compassionate yogi removes the splinter and tends to the wound, prompting the grateful yeti to bring him a tiger as a gesture of gratitude. The yogi then skins the tiger and offers its hide to a monastery, exemplifying the intertwining of legend with real-life events. In the 17th century, Lama Sangwa Dorj, a Buddhist religious leader, embarked on a pilgrimage from India to Nepal, seeking solace in a cave to live as a hermit. During his stay, he claimed that benevolent Yetis would provide him with sustenance, enabling him to pursue a life of meditation upon the death of one such Yeti. Lama Sangwa Dorj preserved its scalp as a sacred relic in the temple he erected in 1667. This relic became an integral part of blessing rituals performed by the temple monks. Subsequently, a yeti hand was added to the collection, serving as a testament to the creature's significance in the temple's history. For centuries, the temple monks guarded these relics vigilantly, resisting any attempts to remove them. However, in 1959, explorer Peter Byrne surreptitiously absconded with several finger bones from the yeti hand, substituting them with human bones. This incident underscores the cultural importance of Yeti legends and stories, which were revered long before the Western world became acquainted with their existence. The Yeti made its initial foray into Western consciousness almost incidentally, as a mere footnote within the pages of a book. In 1832, British naturalist Brian H. Hodgson, in his Discourse on Mammals in Nepal, made a curious observation, the absence of monkeys in the northern and central regions. However, nestled in a footnote, Hodgson recounted a chilling encounter from an expedition where local hunters, gripped by fear, fled from what they perceived to be a wild man, described as upright, cloaked in long dark hair, and lacking a tail. This enigmatic entity intrigued Hodgson, despite the absence of primates. It wasn't until 1889 that the first mention of Yeti footprints emerged in Among the Himalayas, penned by British explorer Lawrence A. Waddell, according to Tibetan lore. 
These substantial tracks were attributed to hairy wild men purportedly dwelling amid the eternal snows. As the 20th century dawned, the allure of the mysterious, hairy wild man spurred the arrival of exploration and hunting parties in the Himalayas. However, it wasn't until Lieutenant Colonel Charles Howard Berry's 1921 expedition to Mount Everest that the press took notice. Howard Berry and his companions encountered perplexing tracks in the snow, evading identification and igniting speculation about the existence of the elusive creature. Accompanying local laborers attributed the tracks to the wild man of the snows, although Howard Berry initially speculated that the prince belonged to a grave off. Journalist Henry Newman's interview with him and his team redirected the narrative. Newman, unimpressed by the Volf theory, focused instead on the Tibetan folklore of a boogie man with backward-facing feet and long, matted hair, in a mistranslation. He rendered Matokangmi, meaning man-bear snowman, as filthy snowman, later popularized as Abominable Snowman, the evocative name seized the public's imagination, sparking widespread interest in the creature. However, expeditions to search for the Yeti faced obstacles due to political and religious tensions following China's invasion of Tibet, resulting in numerous casualties, in 1951. An agreement was reached affirming China's sovereignty over Tibet while preserving its political autonomy and religious freedoms, including the belief in the Mede. With a more stable political climate, explorers resumed their quest to uncover the elusive monster. Among these endeavors, the 1951 Mount Everest Reconnaissance Expedition led by Eric Shipton stands out. This expedition yielded the most iconic piece of Yeti evidence, the Shipton print. This widely circulated photograph depicted a massive human-like footprint reportedly discovered at 18,000 feet on Mount Everest. The image proliferated across newspapers, scientific journals, and popular magazines, captivating audiences worldwide. In 1952, following Shipton's renowned photograph, a Swiss exploration team stumbled upon what they believed to be Yeti tracks at 16,000 feet. Additionally, a porter claimed to have been attacked by a Yeti, although his account lacked support from the rest of the team. The frenzy to locate the elusive monster reached such heights that the Nepalese government seized the opportunity, offering special Yeti hunting licenses. In 1954, the Daily Mail, a popular British newspaper, sponsored a Himalayan expedition in search of the Yeti. Texas oilman and renowned monster hunter Tom Slick also joined the pursuit, having previously pursued creatures like Bigfoot and the Loch Ness Monster. Throughout the 1950s, Slick led three expeditions dedicated to the Yeti, with Life magazine offering a substantial sum of $25,000 for exclusive photos of the creature. However, tensions escalated in the late 1950s, culminating in a Tibetan uprising and a subsequent crackdown on Yeti expeditions by the Chinese authorities, fearing potential espionage. This political turmoil made it exceedingly challenging to conduct further investigations into the Yeti's existence. Despite the obstacles, two expeditions managed to navigate through the restrictions. Between 1960 and 1961, Edmund Hillary and Marlon Perkins led expeditions, accompanied by a team of scientists who examined the infamous Yeti relic hand. Initially believed to be from a modern human, subsequent revelations surfaced, revealing that Byrne had substituted the finger bones. Remarkably, the temple monks permitted them to take the renowned Yeti scalp, under the condition that one of their elders accompanied it, leveraging the opportunity to raise funds for schools in Nepal. In 1960, separate examinations of the scalp conducted in London, Chicago, and Paris concluded that it was a fabricated relic made from zero flesh. The revelation appeared to diminish the enthusiasm of Yeti hunters, causing expeditions to dwindle. None succeeded in providing conclusive evidence of the creature's existence. Then came Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer, the beloved 1960 for Christmas television special featuring a fluffy white Yeti character that reignited public interest. Initially portrayed as menacing with fangs and fur, this character, known as Bumble, is later revealed to be suffering from a toothache. Despite being explicitly labeled an abominable snow monster, Bumble's portrayal likely influenced the prevalent image of the white-haired snow monster associated with the Yeti in contemporary Western pop culture. In the 1970s, the Chinese government dispatched over 100 individuals to investigate the Yeti, yielding no results. Subsequently, 
Western expeditions were permitted into Tibet, yet they too failed to uncover any significant findings. Concurrently, doubts emerged regarding the authenticity of the famous Shipton photograph, with one team member suggesting it may have been a hoax orchestrated by Shipton himself, known for his penchant for practical jokes. Although some expeditions unearthed fragments of bones, skin, teeth, and fecal matter for analysis, none provided conclusive proof of the Yeti's existence. Nevertheless, each new scientific endeavor aimed at answering the question of whether the Yeti is real continues to captivate global attention. The discovery in Bhutan serves as a poignant example of this ongoing fascination. In 2001, a British zoologist recovered several strands of hair from a hollow cedar tree in Bhutan, despite extensive DNA analysis. The source of the hair couldn't be linked to any known animal species. Did this constitute definitive evidence of an undiscovered creature dwelling in the Himalayas? Not exactly. Fast forward to 2014, when the Yeti re-entered the spotlight, following a study revealing that the mysterious hair actually originated from an extinct Paleolithic polar bear. Then, in 2017, a team of scientists examined an additional 20 for alleged Yeti specimens sourced from the Himalayas and Tibetan Plateau. These samples, encompassing bone, tooth, skin, hair, and fecal matter, predominantly turned out to be from bears, with only one exception, which was traced back to a dog. Among these bears were Himalayan bears, known for their pale, reddish-brown fur, a striking resemblance to descriptions of the original Tibetan Yetis. Moreover, researchers uncovered a fascinating revelation. The Himalayan brown bear possesses a distinct evolutionary lineage, diverging from all other brown bears approximately 650,000 years ago. Consequently, the scientists concluded that the study's findings strongly indicate that Yetis are likely based on local brown and black bears a proposition I find myself in agreement with. It's noteworthy that bears hold significant importance in Tibetan mythology and lore, further intertwining the cultural fabric with the mystery surrounding the Yeti. In Tibetan folklore, there exists a belief in a creature known as the Midred, described as a half-human and half-brown bear entity among the Chinese Naki people residing in Upper Tibet. The Midred, alongside apes, marmots, and brown bears, are referred to as the Four Brothers, who are like humans, but are not human. They are believed to share a common ancestry due to their shared ability to stand on their hind legs. Legends recount instances of brown bears abducting women and producing offspring with them, as well as leaving behind human-like footprints. The mythology surrounding the Yeti is a complex tapestry interwoven with Tibetan folklore, religious beliefs, and scientific discoveries, presenting a multifaceted understanding of this enigmatic creature. This amalgamation of cultural elements highlights the rich tapestry of Himalayan traditions, depictions of the Yeti vary widely, ranging from the menacing and bloodthirsty to the benevolent and helpful. However, these representations merely scratch the surface of the deeper significance embedded within Himalayan folklore. The more menacing portrayals of the Yeti serve to instill a healthy sense of caution around bears and to underscore the genuine dangers posed by the harsh conditions of the snow and high altitude. Conversely, the gentler depictions of the Yeti reflect Buddhist principles that emphasize the interconnectedness of all living beings and the belief that each creature has its own purpose and place in the world. What's your take on the Yeti? Share your thoughts and experiences in the comments below. And don't forget to hit that like button if you enjoyed this video. Thanks for joining us on this adventure. Until next time, keep exploring and never stop wondering.